I remember one of my first machine tools in this new position was actually a laser machine, which I sold to the King of Jordan. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I called Germany at that time and said, yeah, I have here an inquiry because the King of Jordan actually was a big fan of Clint Eastwood. Go ahead. Make my day. And he saw a movie where um, Clint Eastwood was handling a, a handgun and at the end of the movie, the King of Jordan saw who made that gun oh my and that gosh. was a guy in the Northeast. But he then called me and said, yeah, well, I need to produce this part here and the King of Jordan wants to produce this also in Jordan. And that was kind of my first machine tool and I know I called Germany and uh, talked to the managing director in charge of the factory of that laser machine. Yeah. And he, he, he obviously hung up several times before I, <laughs> he took me serious. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so awesome. Oh, so you stepped right in the oh, big leagues right there, getting great. everybody's attention, King of Jordan. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. is a good <laughs> story right that, there. That's awesome. Yeah, I that's love awesome. you. Yeah, there's Nigerian princes that try to send me money all the time. It's <laughs> <laughs> also good. Oh, man, I love this trade. I love the people. I love this entire industry. And hearing guys like Thorsten talk about their rise in the industry is absolutely amazing. You know what else is amazing? We actually listened to you guys and created a new YouTube channel, Titans of CNC Podcast, for the long-form video. So this is a small piece of a longer video so make sure you guys head over to our new channel make sure you hit subscribe so we can bring awareness to the entire world and make manufacturing famous Thorsten thank you so much for showing up today go watch this video it's insane thank you so much for the support oh. super good and I, I actually met you in another life I mean same life but you were the CEO at another very large company at DMG Mori yeah, CEO for um, for Americas. At yeah, that time. that's when we met. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's kind of my history. I worked for DMG Mori for yeah more than fifteen years. I went to school in New York, and uh, yeah, therefore I I have a passion for for the U.S. and uh, awesome. had the opportunity to live in Charlotte, North Carolina, very early in my career. Then moved to to China, was in charge of the Asian business, and then ran for close to 10 years, the overall global sales and service responsibility. Wow. So what was the first position that you actually had? Like, what was your day-to-day -day at DMG when you first started out? I was the assistant of this uh, mentor I just mentioned uh, for one year, and then he uh, gave me a flight ticket one day and said, Thorsten, we have a problem in the US. Um, you're going to be the next managing director for the East Coast of Hello. DMG. Hello. <laughs> and a week later, I was, uh, I actually flew into Atlanta and the then still called managing director actually picked me up from the airport, Volker Spitz, a good friend of mine, um, but he didn't know yet that I'm going to take his position on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that was a fun ride back to Charlotte. I from bet. It was a very long ride. <laughs> oh man. Why Heller? It's love at first sight immediately yeah. that it happened. It's a very, very beautiful technology oriented hidden secret of the industry no doubt yeah. it's a, it's a family owned business fourth generation 100% owned by the family of Heller uh, 2600 employees wow. um, fully dedicated to just develop and and manufacture beautiful pieces of equipment and actually solving problems for our customers and yeah for me I like to say, I know a lot of people in this industry, but I didn't know Heller, you know? Mm -hmm. I, did, yeah. I just didn't know. But the more that I learned, I also fell in love with it. And and then then it was kind of almost like a sadness, man, because everything we're doing is here, we're here to promote and bring awareness to manufacturing. And and I'm like, here here's one of the greatest machine tool companies of all time. And yet, if you talk to anybody in the US, they don't know who they are. And it's for the simple fact that if you go into Caterpillar, there's 120 Hellers, but they're not advertising it. They're not allowing cameras in the door. You go into Ford, you go into Cummings, you go into these big plants, Heller's solving all these problems, but the doors are shut. They'll talk about wanting to grow manufacturing, they'll talk about wanting to bring awareness and bringing our kids, and yet they won't show 
what is on their floor because they're they're out there that's their competitive advantage yeah. so it's kind of hard because like yeah, they're yeah. keeping you a secret so recently i worked with you know ken and the team up there you know so your ceo of the u.s and um we got to go into uh detroit diesel hello oh yeah. that was pretty crazy <laughs> that, that it's like what you said is you have all of these workers that have been working for so long at heller and i saw the same thing at detroit diesel so they did something they never did before and they opened the door they let us in with the camera my boy right here gotta go you know and and we we walked through there and they had a 50 about 50 hellers lined up and they were so tight that you can't just go in and take one out and it's like if one goes bad how do you replace it <laughs> yeah and then <laughs> and then i then them. then you realize these things have been running since like 2006 or 2007 non-stop 24 hours a day they that cell alone made over a million diesel engines and if there's any issues you guys actually put your service people and implant them into detroit diesel and they actually rebuild or do what's needed to these machines right where they stand you never take one out you can just basically if you want to rebuild the whole machine you could just do it right there and keep it running. Incredible.